hey guys how you doing welcome to today's live so we're going to be talking about how to deal with difficult customers difficult prospects and all that okay so i'm gonna wait for you guys to join in okay so let me tell you guys why i always start i always start my live why i when i when the live starts i don't wait for people to join i just start talking because the first time i wanted to do a live i did a little research and i found out that they said when your live goes on your page that's recorded version goes on your page what happens is that immediately goes on your page it shows the first 15 seconds of the live so if you start a live and you're saying oh i'm waiting for people to come in oh let's wait a minute blah 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 people may watch that live and then they, they get turned off and they just they just leave right so that's why they say when you start a live talk so that's why Whenever I start my live, even though there's nobody there yet, I just start talking, right? So that's it. So that quick tip is for people who came in on time. That quick tip is for the first few people to join the live when it started. I'm not going to repeat myself. So next time, come exactly eight on the dot, okay? So welcome one more time, everybody. This is our one number. Are we this will be the regulars on this on this my live. One number live are we? Is this our this is our sixth live or seventh live? Abby. You guys are the regular people. Let me know. Macy, Macy and Co. I know my regulars. Akila, Ehi, um, BBM. Those are my regular people. Um, who else is regular here? Queen Rita. Yeah, I know you're regular. What number are we? Emmanuel, what number are we? Is this our our f seventh live or sixth live? I'm not sure. Okay, Queen says it's six. Okay, so this is number six. Eh. Okay, number six live. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, D Daisy, you are regular as well. I haven't seen, I haven't, those are the regular. I kind of know their handles already because they're always logging in. Okay, guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to deal with difficult customers and prospects and all. And I'm actually really excited about this live because um, many people shy away from this, right? Many people, they want to go far in their businesses and all, but then... <laughs> They don't want to have difficult customers. So the first thing I'm going to say is that you need to anticipate it. My question to you is, do you want to go far in your business? Do you want to have a big business? Do you want to be a, uh, a popular brand? Do you want your brand to be loved by people that you don't even know? Do you want people to hear about your brand or your business and then they, they join your business or they buy your product or take your service without you even advertising to them? Is that the kind of business you want? Please go to the comments and answer me. I'm going somewhere. Is that the kind of business you want? Do you want a business where people know you? You don't, as in once they just hear your brand name, they just know, you know? You don't have to advertise, they're just good. Now, for you to have that kind of business, some of you are saying yes, yes, good. For you to have that kind of business, understand that you will, you must, you shall have difficult customers. You're going to have difficult customers, you're going to have Customers that will give you headaches. You're going to have customers that are going to drive you nuts. You're going to have customers that are going to make you question, why am I even doing this business? Was in, she I will not go and dust my CV and do something else. Like, why am I even in this profession? Why? You're going to have customers like that. The only way not to have customers that are going to be dis dissatisfied, the only way not to have customers that are going to be uh, difficult is to have a small business. That's the first point I want to make. Have a small business. But as long as you guys want to have big, all of you are saying yes, 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 popular, where you make a lot of money, where your brand is selling itself, then you must be ready to accommodate annoying customers. You must be ready to accommodate customers that will be dissatisfied. So, the good news is that if you are able to satisfy a, a difficult customer, difficult customers can be your best friend or your worst enemy. In the sense that if you if you satisfy a difficult customer or you make them happy, you win them over and all that, that person can be your biggest fan. That person will tell their friends about you. That person will post you on their Instagram, on their WhatsApp. That person will pay for people to come and use your product. As in, you will enjoy that person, right? So instead of seeing it as, I don't want to have difficult customers that will stress me, why not see it as, okay, let me learn how to handle difficult customers so that eventually they will become raving fans and they will bring people to me. So the same energy they used to stress you, the same energy they used to complain about your brand, your product, your business, or whatever, that is the same energy they are going to use to get people to come and join you eventually, to get customers for you. Just like me, 
if I like if I like a product, like today I went to Tuli Bistro with my husband. I posted Tuli Bistro on my status. Like if I like something, everybody will know about it. Everybody, all my friends, I'll say go and buy from this person. Go and do this. I'm always sending people there. But if I don't like you, well, if I don't like you, I don't really complain much because I'm a business person. I know that I know how it feels. So I'll just like. <laughs> Except your service is really bad. So I, I, I hope we understand that point first. If you understand this first point, go to the comments and say, I understand. Because I have to lay this foundation so you change your prayer point. Your prayer point is no longer God. I don't want to have a customer that will stress me too. How do I handle them, okay? Now, so that being said, uh, my topic or my subtopic today is 10 tips to deal with difficult customers, okay? 10 tips. 10 tips to handle difficult customers. Let me do that. 10 tips to handle difficult customers. That's my subtopic. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in all my lives, I always say 10 tips or something, seven steps for something, five, whatever, three, this, 10, this, eight, this. Why I do that is as, as, a, as an international business trainer, I understand that people like points. People like it when you say five steps to success, 10 roads to this, five comments, you know, that kind of thing. So that's why I train like that, okay? And it's also help you remember. So what are the 10 tips? Okay, let, let me let me type that real quick and then I'll let me pin it. Uh let me see. 10 tips. 10 tips to handle difficult. Sorry, I'm just typing it, okay? Difficult customers. So I'm just typing it so I can is first of all, let me just read. Because my phone is just acting a bit funny. My network is a bit funny. Are we still live? Let me know if we're still live in the comments quickly before I continue. Because these 10 tips are going to be hot. hot. They're going to be hot, hot. If you haven't shared this live, please go and share it. I don't like the number I'm seeing. number I'm seeing is not, it's, it's dropping my morale. It's not, I'm not excited to drop these 10 tips because we're just, how many are we in this life? We're not plenty. Okay, so 10 tips. Number one is understand that you will meet difficult customers. That's number one point I made already, okay? Understand that you will meet difficult customers and it's part of it. So you have to make plans for them, okay? That's number one. Understand that you're going to be faced with difficult customers no matter how good your service is, okay? And you need to know that it's not about your service. Your service may be good, your service may be impeccable, may be fantastic, but you will still be difficult. Why? Because you're a human being. You may make a mistake. No matter how um, careful you are, no matter how serious you are, no matter what, you're still going to make, make a mistake once in a while. And that may lead you to have customers that may be dissatisfied. That's number one. Understand you're going to face them. And it's not about your product or your service or anything. It's just that it's bound to happen. Okay? Number two is what? Prevent trouble before it comes. That's number two. Prevent trouble before it comes. They say prevention is better than cure. Is that not so? Good. Record all your transactions. So if, for example, you sell, um, you sell food, right? And you do it mainly by delivery. So customers call you, oh, hi, um, Mrs. Amino, I want, to buy, um, I want to buy fried rice with turkey and small chops and whatever, right? Record that conversation. Record it either uh, electronically on the phone or written down. Let it be in your business. Let it be an offense for you to receive a phone call without a pen and a book or something. It's better that the thing rings off and then you call the person back than the person calls you, they speak to you, and you don't hear what they were saying. And then the person asks for fried rice, you go and give them jollof rice. It happens in my business a lot. A prospect, we call a prospect and say, okay, we have a meeting happening on Saturday by 2 and on Sunday by 2, which day do you want to come? And the prospect says they want to come Sunday by 2. But because you're not writing and you've called many other people, you forget that the prospect says Sunday by 2. You now go and book them for Saturday by 2. And then they will not come and they'll be upset and you look on serious and you may lose that person for life. That is why number two point is what? Prevent the trouble by documenting things. Prevent the trouble by documenting. Any interaction you have with your prospects, your customers and all that, write it down. Oh, I, I run a spa. Okay, Mr. Labisi came to the spa on Tuesday by five o'clock. Do you understand that? She came, she asked for a Brazilian wax, she asked for a massage and a whatever, and a cold drink. Write it down. 
so that tomorrow if she comes and says oh i my skin is reacting to the cream you guys gave me you say no ma no ma we didn't give you any cream no i came here and i used your cream and after using your cream i'm having rashes you go to your record miss olabisi look at the record here we wrote it down you came for a wax and you came for a massage you didn't use we didn't use any cream on you you didn't order the cream service guess what by the time miss olabisi sees that she'll keep quiet what have you done? You have solved your problem. World War II. Because a customer that comes back, they, they came for trouble. They did not come for to work things out amicably. So just by this number two point, okay? Prevent trouble by recording your interactions. Just by doing this, you will save yourself a lot of what? Headache. Do we understand that? Okay, that's number two. Number three is what? Before you react to your customer, before you react to your prospect, before you react to that person, Put yourself in the customer's shoes. Do you get that? Before reacting, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Okay, so this person came and they paid 10,000 naira to buy um, a, a pair of shoes for me. And then she wore, wore the shoe for a wedding. And then at the wedding, her friend said she came to that same store, bought that same shoe for 9,000 naira. And she's wondering, why did you sell it to me for a 10K? And you sold it to my friend at 9,000 naira. The same week we bought the shoe. Why? If the person is asking that question, don't get upset. First of all, put yourself in the person's shoes. Okay, if I was the one that this happened to, how will I feel? Will I be happy? Will I be upset? If you know you'll be upset about what the person is complaining about, why are you rushing to react? Why are you rushing to get upset with the person? Why? When you know if you're in that person's shoes, some of you have done worse to fellow business people. That's number three. Before you react, put yourself in a person's shoes. How will I feel? Secondly, this is 3P. How will I want to be treated? Are you following? Number three point is before you react, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Also, 3B is ask yourself, how will I want the person to react to me? Do you understand? If this happened to me, if I receive this treatment somewhere else, what will I want to be done to me? How will I want the person to treat me? Based on that analysis, you can now react. Based on that analysis, you can now treat the client the way you want to have been treated if you were in the person's shoes. This number three point is so important and it will save you a lot of stress. If you some of you that have high temper, Nigerians, because of the way Nigeria is, people are just, just get angry easily. If you understand point three, go to the comment and say, I will put myself in their shoes quickly. You already know by now that when I do trainings like this, it's, it's always interactive. I don't like... I don't like talking and talking and talking and then nobody is commenting no so if you understand this point about go and say go to the comments and type i will put myself in the customer's shoes quickly before i go to the next point okay and if you haven't shared this live on your stories please go ahead and share it share it let your friends and people see that we're doing a live because let them learn okay okay well done bbm okay uh independent means fantastic lauren fantastic good so we can continue that's number three kazin well done okay now number four is understand the type of objection understand the type of objection what do i mean by that there are different types of objections right in my business i train people and say there are objections to um to gain clarity there are objections to sound smart there are objections to make a mockery there are objections there are objections um to show a lack of interest, right? That's that's actually very a complex training. It's not for this class, Sha, but just get where I'm coming from. You need to understand before you start reacting, understand what type of objection is this person raising? What kind of issue is my prospect raising? What kind of issue is my customer raising? Right? Is it valid? What they're saying, what they're complaining about, is it valid? Did I really sell fake spare parts to them? Or was it my boys that did it all? Was it just them? find out is it valid is it a valid objection is it a valid issue so you know how to handle it or is it an issue just to sound smart oh uh, this hair you sold to me you know i normally buy my hair in paris and whenever i go to paris the hair is like this like this they used to shake you because shake you so are you sure that this your own hair are you sure that this your hair will actually give me that kind of those are objections just to sound smart the customer wants you to know that they then they used to travel as well so how you react to that kind of person? You validate them. Oh, are you serious? 
you normally buy your hair from paris wow that is amazing you know quality things that's fantastic wow you have an eye for quality wow oh my goodness what have you done you have validated them that's what they want do we understand that so you need to understand what kind of objection is the customer raising if the customer is raising an objection or an issue just to sound smart because they want to be validated and you, you are now going to go and answer the question you know how they say there's verbal and there's non-verbal communication you need to hear what somebody is saying and what somebody is not saying you need to hear what your customer is saying and what they are not saying and most times what they are not saying is louder than what they are saying so that's why before you start reacting or solving the problem understand is this person raising a valid issue is this a valid concern is it a valid problem or are they just trying to if they're trying to sound smart what are you going to do validate them validate them make them sound smart make them feel smart make them feel like they know what they're doing and then you now handle the objection another type of objection may be just to cause trouble just to cause trouble i tell my every meat you should eat i always tell them i say you that's why i say in my business we say commit the business to god my network marketing baby we tell people commit the business to god because there are some prospects that are coming to your business and they are coming to make trouble from the moment they join your team wahala issues 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 some customers they buy a car from you and the amount of headache they give you from buying that car the profit you made on that car said as in you spend everything on that on that prospect that's why i always say commit the business to god any business you are doing put god go to show you the person that will come and bring customers to you and the person that will come and drag you on social media he will show you ahead of time so that's very important okay so there are three types of Sorry guys, it, it seems like the network is bad though. I don't know whether it's, I don't know what's going on. Did you guys get that fine that last point where I spoke about the three different types of customers? Do you guys get that point? Okay. You guys are requesting to be in my life. I don't understand. What did, what did you keep here that you're looking for? <laughs> i don't understand you are saying you just made do you guys get that point i just made because that point is very valid <laughs> to save you a lot of oh okay maybe it's my network i said that number four points is understand the type of objection i said there are three types of objections right number one they are valid objections number two they are objections or issues to sound smart they want you to validate them and number three there are some customers that just want to cause trouble. That's what I said. So before you start handling an objection, you need to understand what type of objection is it. That's what I said. What type of objection is this person raising? Is it a valid objection? Are they just trying to sound smart or something? That's what I said, okay? Do, do, do we understand? Do we understand now? Do we understand now? Let me know, please. Before I move to number five. I'm treating 10 points today. Awesome. Thank you, BBM. Type of objection, valid objection to sound smart and to cause trouble, okay? Awesome. And I said, if it's a valid objection, you can handle it with what I'm teaching you. If it's an objection to sound smart, you need to validate them. Make them feel like they are smart too, okay? Or if it is an objection to, to cause trouble, I told you guys, pray. Commit your business to God so that God will save you from those kind of people, okay? So number five. Number five is very important. Number five is know the law and customer rights in your business that's number five know the law and the customer rights as regards your business guys this one eh, is so important like i cannot even overemphasize this one know the law and the customer rights in your business don't just go and start business like this in one year you've made profit of two million naira one customer will come with wahala and collect 2.5 million naira from your hand and you're wondering kila joe okay i cannot i cannot explain what that means just if you get it you get it do you understand that know the laws in your business in it's only nigeria somebody will go and start a farming business they have they know nothing about farming nothing about the laws of the land and you're collecting investment from people for farming you don't even know anything about it you don't know if you're supposed to pay ta you don't know anything only in Nigeria, you start a business. What are the laws surrounding this business? Know your law. 
Know the law and customer rights concerning your business. For example, if you have a shop and there's a car park, I learned it in my in, in um university. One of the courses I took was uh law, law 101 or something, right? And they taught us that your car park, you should always write cars are parked at owner's risk. In your shop, have a sign that says properties are left at owner's risk. Things like that. So that if somebody comes to your shop or to your car park or something and their car is stolen or their property is missing, they will not come and say, it's when I came to your office, they stole one million naira for my bag. When I came to your office, they stole my Chanel purse. They stole my iPhone 13 Pro Max. No. If you know the law regarding how having an office and all, you will know that in your office you must have that. For example, in my business, we have a clause. When somebody makes their payment, we have a clause that is there. And it happened with us over a period of time when we had one or two problems. We said, oh, this we got a lawyer. A lawyer told us, this is what you're going to do. Oh, my God. I'm not seeing any comments or anything. So I need to know if you guys are still with me, okay? So number five, know the law and customer rights in your business. This will save you a lot of headache. If you get this point, say, I will know the law. Quickly. If you understand this point, go to the comments and say, I will know the law. Because this point is actually extremely is actually extremely important, okay? Say, I will know the law, okay? Somebody saying, ah, I'm a Soronke, what's my business with law now? As in, what am I using law to do? Okay, okay. They've not sent you a letter before. I've, I've gotten, like, two letters, lawyers. Like, I don't know whether they were suing me or, or someone in me. I don't even know what it was. I've gotten, like, two letters like that or three letters in my, in my lifetime. I've, I've done my business for about six years, almost seven years now. Next year, maybe seven years. So when I say know the law, I know what I'm talking about, right? There's someone one time that sent a lawyer, sent a letter to me. His lawyer sent a letter, blah, 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 blah. And I read, I'm like, what is all this? Because I already know the law. And I also have, we also have, like, some lawyers. We got our lawyer to draft something. And the person... Each point the person made, the person, the lawyer negated everything. And we're good to go, right? So know the law, okay? Number six. Number six is, okay, let me, let me do a little recap. Those of you that are joining us late, uh, we're talking about 10 tips to handle difficult customers. I said, number one, understand that you will meet difficult customers all the time in your business once in a while, except you don't want your business to grow. But if you're going to have a growing business, it is inevitable for you to meet difficult prospects, difficult customers. Number two, I said, prevent trouble by recording all your transactions with your customers. Okay? Prevent trouble. Number three is what? Before you react, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Okay? And find out how will I react if it was me in the person's shoes. And secondly, how will I want to be treated? Number four, I said, understand the type of objection. And number five, I said, know the law and customer rights in that business. Okay? Fantastic. So let's go to number six. Number six is, don't try to win an argument. Number six, don't try to win an argument. You see that thing where they say, customer is always right. See, let me tell you the truth, guys. Eh? You have blown. Meaning, the business you are doing... You don't really care whether you make money or not because you're already swimming in money, you're already rich and all that. No wahala. In that case, you can be chasing your customers away by winning arguments, arguing with them. But if you have not yet blown and you know that that business is paying your bills, don't try to win an argument because there you have two options. Either you win an argument and you lose the customer or you lose the argument and you win the customer. Are you following? Don't try and sound smart to your prospects or to your customer. Don't try and make them feel like they are wrong. A customer is telling you, no, 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 no. This, um, this, uh, spare parts you are selling, it is Japanese. You say, no, it's American. No, it's Japanese. It was invented by Japanese. No, it is American. And you are arguing with them, it is American. On the 1992 American Constitution, when you finish winning that, the customer will say, eh, it's American. Okay, no, Allah, I'm looking for Japanese. And they will leave you and they will go. <laughs> so you now begin to feel smart. Eh? Wale Shoinka, PhD, you are smart. Doctor. Doctor argument winner. And the customer has gone. So how do you feel? Hmm? How do you feel now? Because some of you are not lawyers, but you are always going around arguing up and down. Arguing up and down. Do not, you are not, your goal is not to win an argument. And see, uncle. You get it now? Your goal is not to win an argument. So listen to them. Validate what they are saying. 
oh no this thing is japanese and you say really it's japanese wow i actually thought it was american i because you know i bought it from america so i just thought it was american but you know these americans is uh japanese and chinese that make the, most of their products so maybe it's even uh, japanese uh, but i they told to them it was american <laughs> finish what have you done the person has won the arguments but guess what you have won the customer and the customer will live there with your products and your and their money is in your hand or in your bank accounts so which one is better please go to the comments and tell which one is better it's better not to look smart but to collect money than to look smart and not to collect money this point may seem it may seem weird like ah uh, but what are you talking about but i'm telling you that many people have lost customers because they are trying to win an argument because they are trying to sound smart the customer will be happy eventually when the customer finds out that you were actually right they will call you and say oh that thing you showed me you were right oh it's actually um american or it's not japanese and you'll be like are you serious wow okay thank you are, are you following wisdom 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 okay so do not win try to win arguments okay lose the argument gain the customer or gain or win the argument and lose customer the choice is yours okay so that's number six number seven is um study your competitors study your competitors how are your competitors handling their own customers how are their competitors here i'm not the type of person that will say don't copy people you see me i can copy copy the right cards you you sell maybe you're you're into okay, i just saw my friend um helen she's into tour, tourism right she does tours, tourism and all and you let's say you you want you want to start a tourism business and all that go and find out from waka now um social prefects uh what's the name dmp people that have tourism go and find out what they are doing how do they handle their customers there was a tour i went on um I went to Egypt last year with my family and then there was a big problem like in the airport something happened they wanted to seize our pass they, they seized our passports actually it was like it was bad 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 but it was it was it was messy but guess what the main person who was arguing and get making everybody upset and saying no they will not agree we will not agree when the airport is like 3 a.m in Egypt can you imagine guess what that person that customer eventually because dmp was so good at handling customers objections and all that do you know that eventually that same customer that was complaining went and now started doing adverts for this for dmp she has done a lot of adverts for them and all that and now they are pali pali why because you cannot and then you, you are coming into tourism for example go and find out what did she do because you are bound to meet with difficult people i also was into tourism at some point my friend and i didi and i run the voyage social prefect was like our mentor we used to find out what are they doing oh they are doing t-shirts let's go and do t-shirts oh they are doing this let's go and do it copy find out those who have been in the industry before you what are they doing how are they doing it there's not this thing in nigeria where somebody somebody's um somebody's ahead of you in business they are doing well and you are dragging with the person you are you are throwing shots at the person you are saying nasty stuff. Well, meanwhile the, the solution to your problem is with that person just go and lay low and go and collect mentorship please oh how did you how, handle this problem somebody came and asked for their money back how did you handle it somebody said that the products are expired how did you handle it what did you do this point will save you you can learn from two ways either you learn from mentors or you learn from your own mistakes either you learn from mentors or you learn from mistakes please answer me which one is better to learn from your own mistakes and you have collateral damage you've lost customers or to learn from somebody who has already done it ahead of you please go to the comments and ask me which one is better i need your responses before i go to number eight okay we're on number we're on number seven now good thank you mentors are better so let me let me let me digress a bit eh you see someone that is doing something that you like eh you want to be like them don't you ever insult them don't you ever say anything nasty about them just leave them just copy them because you can never be like what you despise do you understand you can you can't it's not possible you can't be insulting somebody and all that and you want to be like them 
or you are telling people, no, don't go and buy from those people. Oh, their products are bad. Meanwhile, you are copying what they're doing. It won't work. Okay? Awesome. So let's go to number eight. Number eight is ask for feedback immediately. Number eight is what? Ask for feedback immediately. Okay? That's a, one of the best ways to prevent issues from your customers. Right? So, for example, guys, give me a minute. I don't drink water. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? If, for example, you, um, you are into... Mm, I'm looking for I'm looking for I'm looking for a, a business to use. Um, let me say my business for example, right? We have products that we sell. We have um, healthy products. We have beverages and all. Now, if for example, so this is one of our products, right? It's called an energy diffuse energy bracelet, right? It helps to pr protect you from radiation and all that. If for example, I sell that bracelet to somebody, right, and they use it for a one week or two weeks, I'm going to ask them questions. Did you enjoy the bracelet? Did you feel yourself having more energy after using the bracelet? Do you realize that when you stay in front of your laptop, your TV and all that, you're not getting that weak after using the bracelet? Did you enjoy it? Or oh, is the bracelet fading? Or oh, do you know how to clean it? I'll ask questions. Before the customer starts getting dissatisfied, before they start getting upset, before they start having issues, I will ask for feedback. When I ask for feedback and they tell me, oh, I didn't like it. Oh, oh, it's too small. Oh, do you have a bigger one? Oh, say, well, we have a bigger one. I'll get you the bigger one. I can swap for you. Right? Oh, um, the restaurant, the food I ate, the pepper was too much. Before the person goes to Instagram, and they'll go and call you out and say, ah, that's uh, food you sold to me. The pepper was too much. Nobody should go and eat in that restaurant again. Before the person does that, you have already gone to go and ask them, did you enjoy the food? They'll tell you, no, I did not enjoy it. You apologize to them first. Don't start telling them, eh, you know, because you're not a Yoruba person, that's why you don't understand the way, and eh, you don't understand Pepe, you don't appreciate Pepe. Ah. Oh, you are telling your customer that they don't appreciate, okay, they will drag you. <laughs> and you will never see them again. But because you have asked for that feedback, you have the chance to apologize and make things right before they get upset or they go and tell anybody or spoil your market. Do we understand it? Getting feedback is extremely important. Customers that do that, they go very far. And let me tell you something else, eh, about feedback. Sometimes when, when, you, when you, you collect feedback from someone, you may not even solve the problem, but just them complaining to you will make them feel good, right? So, for example, um, I went to... I forgot the restaurant I went to. I think it was... Um, it was... I forgot one restaurant I went to, Sha. And I didn't really like the food, Yeah. You know, you guys know that I like food. I'm a foodie. So, <laughs> I didn't like the food and I complained. I, I was like, they came to me and like, oh, ma, did you enjoy the food? I'm like, eh, yeah, I like the steak, but this one was too salty, blah, 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 blah. And after I complained, we're like, oh, I'm so sorry, ma, don't be upset. We're going to tell the chef, blah, 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 blah. I felt good. I will not come and drag them. I won't say anything and I'll go back there because even though they did not solve the problem, they made me feel good by getting my feedback. So, guys, feedback is so important. Hmm. I can't overemphasize the importance of this in handling customers. So, that's number eight. Number nine, we just have two more. Number nine is budgets. Budget for refund. Budget for return. Budget for replacement. Budget for freebies and compensation. Do you get what I said? Budget. In your... See, as a business... I need to stand up for this point. Sorry, guys. I need to stand up. Hmm? As a business person, it is, it is business suicide for you to make money. You make a profit of 10000 and you think that the 10000 is for you to blow. You think that the 10000 is for you to eat. No, you can't do that. As a business person, if your profit is 10000 from something, out of that 10000 part of it needs to be put back into the business. Do you understand? Have a session of your budget to handle, okay, if a customer says they want a refund, what am I going to do? If a customer says, oh, they want a replacement, what am I going to do? Are you following? You need to budget as a business person. Understand that not everybody will enjoy your product or your service and all that. And you need to have a budget for return. If somebody returns the product, what will I do? 
If somebody says they want to upgrade, and you need to have it in your budget. It's part of it. Do you, you need to plan for it. You need to plan, have a whatever for compensation. So somebody says, um, somebody, um, you sell food to somebody, and they say, oh, they don't like the food. You can say, okay, um, okay, you know what? We are going to give you free, free, a free, a free smoothie. You didn't like the food. We're sorry. We're so sorry about that. And to compensate you, we are going to give you a free, a free smoothie, a free bottle of juice, a free bottle of pineapple. Or somebody they say, I buy this hair from you now, right? And I don't like it. And I say, oh, I don't like the hair. It's not, I don't like the fringe. I don't like the shekini call. What will you do? You say, okay, you know what? Sorry, man, we will not be able to replace the wig because it's so expensive, it's imported. But we are going to send you a free hairbrush and a free um, hair oil. We are going to send you hairbrush and hair oil for you to treat your hair all for free. We are going to deliver it to you free. Guess what? If I was angry before and they are giving me free hairbrush, free oil for my hair, what will I say as a customer? Eh, okay, no problem. Thank you. Guess what? You have solved a national problem. Do we understand that? Have a budget for compensation, have a budget for return, have a budget for refund, have a budget for freebies as a business person. Okay? You're into tourism, for example, and um, you took somebody somewhere. They didn't, have, they, they didn't have a nice experience. You took them to the Maldives. If you know, you know. And they didn't have a nice experience. Okay, did I just do that? Anyway, you guys are used to Misha. And they didn't have a nice experience. What are you going to do? You say, okay, you know what? Um, the next trip you're going on, we're going, we're going to do your visa free of charge, especially if it's a high net worth customers, customer. I'm not saying you should look down on low net worth customers. That's what I'm saying. No, but they are customers and they are customers in my business. We have a package of 49,990. We have a package of hundred K. We have 200 K. Then we have 1 million naira. Hello. If a prospect that paid 1 million naira has a problem, I will try and solve that problem. If they're upset and all that, I will try and pacify them. Are you following? It doesn't make sense that somebody paid one millionaire and then I'm not treating them anyhow. I don't understand. If it means me, I've bought free things for them. I've, I've dashed somebody free bracelet before. Free bracelet, free um, pendant, free bees. Why? Because I want the person to be happy. Because a prospect that can pay one millionaire has other prospects that can pay one millionaire. And if they're happy, other people will come to me. Common sense. Some of you, 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 somebody complains about something and you don't apologize. You're upset. Somebody says, I don't like the service you rendered. And you are, you are explaining yourself to the person. You are saying, no, no, it is your fault. Are you, are you, are you normal? Are you okay? The person is a regular customer and then you are talking to them anyhow. I don't understand. Hey, God. I don't know. I don't know. Nigeria. <laughs> anyway, Sha. Let me just, I don't want to overstress this point because last time my husband said I overstressed a particular point. So let me know overstress this point, okay? So you get what I mean. You get what I mean, okay? So have a budget for all that. Number 10, which is the last but not the least. The last but not the least. Are you guys ready for number 10? Are you ready for number 10? If you're ready for number 10, say, I am ready. If you're ready for number 10, say, Oh, this hair is giving me so much heat. Jesus. If you're ready for number 10, say, I am ready. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Why are you guys laughing? What did I say that is funny? You guys are laughing. <laughs> what did I say? Are you guys ready for no? You guys, you guys do not advertise. See, you, you guys on this like, sharing with people. All these freebies I'm giving you, eh? These are things that people pay for. NGOs and all, they pay for us to come and talk. And you're enjoying it for free. And you're not sharing with your friends and family members. It's not nice. All wrong. All wrong. So what's number 10? Number 10 is train your staff to handle situations train your staff to handle situations in your absence what do i mean by that the reason why many businesses in nigeria are not doing well is the staff imagine i'm going to i want to go to like a okay so i went to lagos there, there is this there is this um okay okay well done darling akila well done there's this um, shop that sells shoes, sells shoes in Lagos and in Abuja. I don't know why they're always showing me Lagos adverts. Me because I used to be in Lagos before. They're always showing me their adverts and all. And I told myself, oh, more when I get to Lagos, I must go to that store. I must go and buy from that store, right? So when I got to Lagos, Didi and I, I, I called them. You know how Lagos traffic is now. You are suffering in that Lagos. I'm sorry. I invite you to Abuja to come and live a good life. Anyway, 
So I, I called them. I said, okay, I'm coming to your store. We're closing. That we're closing the store and all that. I'm like, see, I came all the way from Abuja. And I'm going back in a few days. And I'm on the island. I need to come and buy these shoes. Please, I need to buy shoes. Please keep your set out. That if you get here late, we're going to close. I'm like, I need to come. I need to come and buy something, please. Okay. And then luckily for me, she was like, okay, no problem. We'll leave the store open. And then I came and I bought shoes that, and these shoes were not cheap. Now, that girl, that sales girl is trained. Either she's well trained or she's related to this, the, the owner of the shop or she's being paid on commission. You know what most Nigerian sales girls will do? Or most Nigerian staff? They'll say, no, 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 ma, please, I'm sorry. We close at six o'clock. I cannot wait for you. Yes, ma. I know that, I know that, um, you came all the way from Abuja, but closing time is nine o'clock. It's six o'clock. Once it is six, we cannot wait. We'll close it. And true, true, you get there by six o five. They have closed the store. If the owner of the store was there and you're a customer and you come, would they close? They would never close. Does it matter? Come, 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 because they know you're going to make money for them. So what do you do? Train your staff. I beg you. Ch people that work for you, tra train them. Let them know how to handle objections when you are not there. Let them know how to handle customers when you are not there. It's so important, guys. I can't overemphasize the importance of this. So that they don't ruin your business. It is wrong in Nigeria for you to have, because they know that once it's 30 days, you pay their salary. Whether they sell low, they don't sell low, you pay their salary. Whether prospects come, they don't come. Some of you that are in my business, you give your secretaries your calls to make. Quality calls. You give a secretary, your secretary will mess up that name list and you don't care. Because you are not a serious person. So please, train your staff. Find out what they are doing. Okay? If not, they will, they will spoil. <clears throat> what if they don't listen? Sack them. I don't understand. I'm paying you salary. I'm telling you something. You are not listening. As in, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I don't get. It. You are, you are, you are, you are not ready to work with me now. You are going off. You go goodbye. In Nigeria, that people are looking for a job up and down. I don't understand. <laughs> Farewell. You know what I mean. So because many businesses are being ruined by staff. Once in a while, as a business owner, don't do madam, don't do boss. Call your call your customers randomly. Oh sir, you came to the store today and you bought um fifty k worth of products. Did you enjoy the products? Did you like it? How was the customer service? Ask questions. And then you will know what's up. Okay? So, guys, these are the 10, type, 10 tips to handle difficult customers in your business, in your work, and all of that. Okay? So, we've come to the end of this live. I hope we understood stuff. I'm going to do a little recap for those that came late. Mm? Late comments. I'm going to do a little recap for you guys. Okay? So, I said, number one tip is to understand that you would always meet difficult customers if you're going to have a big business. I said number two tip is to, is to understand that. Um, number two is prevent trouble by documenting all your interactions with your customers. Number three is before you react, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Number four is understand the type of objection. Is it a valid objection? Is it an objection to sound smart? And like I said, some customers actually just, they're just trying to sound smart. So what do you do in that case? Validate their objection, okay? Um, I said um is it a some then some customers cause trouble so i said commit your business to god god will make your life easy it's not everybody that should be your customer it's not everybody that should register in your team it's not everybody every prospect that should that should buy from you it's not every customer's money you should collect because some customers you collect their money and and you, the kind of wahala they'll give you eh <laughs> that's why i said commit your business to god no god so that god will help you in your business because <laughs> anyway number five and then some people your competitor sends them to you. Some people were sent by your competitors. It's only Holy Spirit that will be able to tell you this person is a fake customer. If you know, you know. If you don't get it, come to my DM. I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll pray for you. Number five, know the law and the customer rights. Like I said, know the laws of your business. Know the customer rights of your business. So that someone will not come and sue you to court. Number six, don't try to win an argument. I said, you either win an argument and you lose the customer or you lose the argument and win the customer. And winning the customer is better because you're going to get money. Number six is, number seven is, um, how are your competitors solving their problems? Copy your competitors. Number eight is, ask for feedback immediately, as soon as possible. Number nine is, um, have a budget for refund, return, replacement, freebies, and compensation. 
Number nine, number 10 is train your staff to handle the situation. Okay, so that's the end of this. Um, I normally give bonus, so y'all know I like to give bonuses because like I'm extra like that because I like to give. I'm a nice person. So I'm going to give you guys your bonus. So the bonus is I'm going to tell you that um, three types of dissatisfied customers. This thing I'm telling you, I did a video on it on my Instagram. Go and watch the video. Three types of dissatisfied customers. The first type are the type that will give you feedback. So you do something to them, they don't like it. They'll come and tell you, oh, I don't like what you did, blah, 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 blah. And they'll give you opportunity to apologize and solve the problem. The second type of dissatisfied customers are those that are upset. They're not happy with you or anything. And they would they will not say anything. They will just keep quiet. But they will never buy from you again. And those who are close to them, they will know. And they will not buy from you. So, number one type of dissatisfied customer, they will complain to you. You will solve their problem. Number two, they will not talk. They will not complain. But you will never see them in your life. And, and that number two. Sometimes I'm number two. Sometimes I'm number one yeah okay then number three type hey they will drag your destiny one man drag yeah eh? they will drag your destiny oh my god number three type of the customers just pray against them they will drag you on instagram drag you on insta blog niger drag you on facebook drag you on whatsapp put your picture they will drag your destiny so how do you handle those people by doing the 10 things i taught you today it will reduce the number of dissatisfied customers that you have okay all right guys um i'm glad you learned a lot from this like this every wednesday by 8 p.m we learn about businesses and all of that okay all right guys i've come to the end of this meeting have a fantastic day god bless you and see you at the top bye